Okay, my most successful horse to date would have to be Ostra, this big guy here who I've got with me this weekend. Um, I actually found him in Belgium last year um, with the help of my coach, Lorna Jorgensen, who's a Danish rider. Um, so we searched all through Europe and as I found him uh, in Belgium last year and since then we've had a, a lot of success in the Grand Prix competitions here in Australia, both the national shows and also the international shows. Um, and he's, as I say, yeah, been a, a great horse for me whilst it's only been a, a short amount of time. The best moment of my career would have to be actually with a different horse, uh, my former Grand Prix horse called Saxon Koenig. Um, who I had at the National Championships whilst I did my first ever Grand Prix event at the Nationals and I placed sixth. Um, that was two years ago which I was absolutely thrilled at to say my, my first Grand Prix at the Nationals and to come away with the ribbon was just absolutely brilliant. So I have to say that was the best moment. <laughs> about two months later that that same beautiful horse actually did a quite a devastating leg injury, uh, tore, a, tore a hole in his suspensory, um, as I say, literally uh, two months after those national championships and that's actually um, had him out of the competition arena ever since. So talk about the highs and lows of horses and how quickly uh, things can turn. So when choosing my next dressage horse, I think the most important thing is uh, the willing attitude. Um, horses have got to want to work and also be able to let you train them to do to do the job when you're out there, you know, in the, in the dressage arena and at the competitions. The last thing that you want is a horse that lets you down because it just doesn't have the right attitude. So that's certainly something that I look for uh, when choosing a horse at any stage. It can be the most talented horse in the world, but if it doesn't have that, that right attitude, um, well, you're not going to get anywhere, or if it's you know hot or spooky or, or difficult to ride, as I say, no, no matter how much talent it has, that's always going to make your life as a rider difficult, and uh, that's certainly something that I'm not interested in, uh, in putting up with. <laughs> I would have to say my bag of carrots that uh, down at my stables is always never ending. I think with a little bit of bribery you can go a long way with horses. We take our young horses for trail rides around our property as they just get them out to as many different uh, arenas and environments as possible. Just basically get them to experience uh, life as, as much as possible and certainly you know, not just work them in the arena, in the indoor arena all day, just get them out and about and um, that certainly helps I think when you then bring them out to the competition arena if they've you know, experienced as much as possible um, in their training before their first competition day. I probably have to say um, it was my very first ever dressage competition, official dressage competition here at Werribee about 10 years ago. I was of course very nervous and uh, on a beautiful horse um, that I previously rode called Balmoral Ice. Um, anyway, I had everything absolutely organised and into the arena I went, um, halt saluted, trotted off and it was quite a windy day and it was back in the days of uh, having those cap um, caps not without the, uh, the chin strap on and anyway as I left uh, the halt at X, a gust of wind came through and off went my hat out into the middle of the arena so I had to proceed and do the rest of my test without a hat on, much to my embarrassment. <laughs> um, but as I say, certainly a very memorable first ever dressage test for me. Um, so here it's quite hot and humid down at Werribee at the moment so certainly we won't be doing too much in the, the pre-event warm-up and also the morning of the competition. Um, other days if it might have been a little bit cooler, um, would any, if he's feeling quite fresh, I might do a little bit more. Um, but this morning I've just taken him for a little bit of a walk around all the arenas and just to, to stretch his legs and then I'll yeah, just ride him just straight away before the test. Um, as I say, I feel that he's a, a horse that he doesn't need so much sort of warming in into the test. It's better to keep him a bit fresh, so, and given also, as I said, that the temperature, we'll just be keeping at that today. 
Okay, well, I think there's already a lot of really positive changes that are happening in Dressage Australia at the moment. Um, we're seeing lots more CDI events, which is the international standard dressage event uh, in Australia. I think there's about three new ones on the calendar in, in 2012, which is just fantastic from a rider's point of view that it's allowing us to get a lot more exposure in front of the international judges and also those big sort of atmospheric um, type environments just um, that we certainly do need um, and don't get to practice enough when comparing ourselves with the riders based over in Europe who have the opportunity to compete in events like that every week if they, they wish to do so.